The Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge. Thus have I heard, once the Blessed One was dwelling in Rajagriya and Vulture Peak Mountain, together with a great gathering of the Sangha of monks and a great gathering of the Sangha of Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Blessed One entered the Samadhi that expresses the Dharma called Profound Illumination. And at the same time, Noble Apokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, while practicing the Profound Prajnaparamita, saw in this way. He saw the five standards to be empty of nature. Then, through the power of the Buddha, Venerable Shariputra said to Noble Avogateshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, How should a son or daughter of noble family train who wishes to practice the profound Prajnaparamita? Addressed in this way, Noble Avogateshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, said to Venerable Shariputra, O Shariputra, a son or daughter of noble family who wishes to practice the profound Prajnaparamita should see in this way seeing the five skandhas to be empty of nature. Form is emptiness, emptiness also is form. Emptiness is no other than form, form is no other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, perception, formation, and consciousness are emptiness. Thus, Shariputra, all dharmas are emptiness. There are no characteristics. There is no birth and no cessation. There is no impurity and no purity. There is no decrease and no increase. Therefore, Shariputra is emptiness. There is no form, no feeling, no perception, no formation, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no appearance, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no dharmas, no eye datu, up to no mind datu, no datu of dharmas, no mind consciousness datu, no ignorance, no end of ignorance, up to no old age and death. No end of old age and death, no suffering, no origin of suffering, no cessation of suffering, no path, no wisdom, no attainment, and no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, since the Bodhisattvas have no attainment, they abide by means of Prajnaparamita. Since there is no obscuration of mind, there is no fear. They transcend falsity and attain complete nirvana. All the Buddhas of the three times by means of Prajnaparamita fully awaken to unsurpassable, true, complete enlightenment. Therefore, the great mantra of Prajnaparamita, the mantra of great insight, the unsurpassed mantra, the unequaled mantra, the mantra that calms all suffering should be known as truth since there is no deception. Prajnaparamita mantra is said in this way, Te Ata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasangati Bodhisoha. The Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound Prajnaparamita. Then the Blessed One arose from that samadhi and praised Noble Avogateshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, Good, good, O son of noble family, thus it is, O son of noble family, thus it is. One should practice the profound Prajnaparamita just as you have taught, and all the Tathagatas will rejoice. When the Blessed One had said this, Venerable Shariputra, Noble Avogateshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, that whole assembly in the world with its gods, humans, asuras, and gandharvas rejoice and praise the words of the Blessed One. Kala. <laughs> Chandra Zamarayam Vete Atam Gate Gate Paragate Parasangati Buddhi Soha Mapa Gonjo Zonji Gai Dembe Doji Shiva Doji Baba Doji Shiva Doji Jagi Baji Vedu Vishu Danji Shilin Goye Zongiri Nunja Jejo Shiva Da The fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. 
May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. Holy Lamas high, wrap the sky, dharma bodies, and mass of clouds of knowledge and love, and let them pour upon the earth of your disciples as we are ready to shower of rain, the teaching steep in water. This jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. Edam Guru Radha Mandala Gamni Radha Yami Yadanja Yijanamla Yanjo Badu Dani Yazo Jin Dagi Jin Yibezo Nam Yin Rola Vijizan Yijavajo Ya Sangatuotene Gay 
Uh, so, once again, we are looking at Lama Tsongkhapa's great treatise on the stage of the path to enlightenment, and if we look under the major heading, the determination of the effects of actions, we find three uh, um, headings. We find black actions and their results, white actions and their results, uh, and then a presentation of other classifications of karma. Uh, so we've gone through those first two, and we're currently dealing with a presentation of other classifications of karma. Uh, so under uh, that section, uh, we find that there are two headings, uh, the distinction between projecting and completing karma, uh, and then karma whose result you will definitely uh, or only possibly experience. So karma that is certain and then karma that is uncertain. Uh, so those are the two categories. So when we look at that first category, uh, where we look at the difference between or the distinction between projecting uh, and completing karma, uh, we find that the projecting or the throwing karma, it's called sometimes, is something that is fixed, whereas the completing karma is something that has varieties, is not necessarily fixed. Uh, so when we look at the uh, human basis, uh, for instance, which is a higher realm rebirth, uh, we can say uh, that that human basis uh, is brought about by a virtuous uh, um, throwing or projecting karma. That's a fixed karma. Um, but the details that that person experiences, the wanted and unwanted uh, experiences that take place, uh, um, uh, come from the completing karma. And we say that that's not fixed because there is a mix of uh, um, virtuous uh, and non-virtuous uh, completing karma. Um, but uh, it is necessarily a virtuous throwing or projecting karma because there is the experience or the basis which is the higher realm rebirth uh, or the human basis. Uh, so the same is true when we look at the uh, um, animal realm. Uh, we look at the example, for instance, of a peacock. Uh, a peacock has a uh, non-virtuous throwing or projecting karma that is fixed. Why? because the peacock is in a lower realm of cyclic existence, so it necessarily uh, has a throwing or projecting karma that is non-virtuous. Um, but the uh, completing karma uh, is not fixed because we have both virtuous and non-virtuous completing karmas. So the example of the peacock is used uh, who, that has the uh, lower realm rebirth, which is a non-virtuous throwing or projecting karma, but then has these details, these feathers and so forth that are beautiful, that come from a variety of uh, virtuous uh, and then the unwanted experience, a variety of non-virtuous uh, um, uh, completing karmas. Uh, so we say uh, that throwing or projecting karma is fixed, completing karma is not. think so. <coughs> after the sec that section we get to the place where uh, we look at uh, um, how uh, karma uh, produces things. So, uh, does one karma produce one rebirth, uh, or does it happen in a different way? So then we find two different opinions that Lama Tsongkhapa presents uh, in this section. We find the presentation of Basu Bandhu's opinion from the uh, Abhidharma Kosha, where he states that uh, uh, one one karma produces one rebirth, uh, and then the uh, Asanga's uh, presentation that's found in the Compendium of Knowledge that states that one karma can produce one rebirth or a multitude of rebirths, a multitude of karmas can produce one rebirth or a multitude of rebirths, etc. Uh, so uh, there is a different opinion there, uh, uh, the differing opinion. So Asanga and Basu Bandhu differ in their opinion, Basu Bandhu believing that one karma producing one rebirth, a Sangha believing that it, it's not fixed in that way, as explained before. <laughs> Okay. 
Um, so then we get to the section on karma that you will definitely uh, or not definitely experience or, or karma that is certain uh, that one will experience and then karma that is uncertain. Uh, so if one engages in any among the ten non-virtuous activities and there is a long premeditation, someone thinks about the, doing those things for a long period of time, uh, then this is a karma that one is uh, certain to experience. Uh, if one uh, engages in virtue and ethical behavior and thinks about it for a long period of time, there's a large amount of premeditation, uh, then, then that becomes a karma that is virtuous uh, that one will be certain to experience. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, so then we get into the next section that deals with uh, karma that one has done, karma that is accumulated. Uh, so if we look at Jayan Sheba's outline, we find the first karma that is, uh, one is done, karma that is accumulated, uh, karma that is not accumulated, and then we have a presentation of, uh, uh, um, a presentation of the times of fruition. Um, so uh, when we uh, look at the first thing, the, what is karma that is done, we find a quote from the levels of yogic deeds from a Sangha's text. Uh, it says, what is karma that you have done? An action that you have thought about or you have consciously set into motion, either physically uh, or vocally. So when we put this consciously set it into motion here, there is this idea that it's motivated by the non-virtues of the mind. Uh, so we have the non-virtues of the mind of uh, um, covetousness, harmful intent, and wrong view. Uh, and then the three non-virtues of the body, killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct, the four non-virtues uh, of the speech of uh, um, lying, uh, harsh words, uh, divisive speech, and um, gossip. Um, so those things are set in motion. Uh, those actions of the body and speech are set in motion by the, the negative mind. So here we can say that the negative mind is the mind that's imbued with any among those three non-virtues of the mind, of, again, of covetousness, harmful intent, or a wrong view of some sort. Uh, so this is uh, uh, karma um, that uh, is done. It's been consciously uh, uh, set in motion. Uh, and then it says that m the action itself is a physical or verbal action. So it's in, in any among those seven, the three non-virtues of the body or four non-virtues uh, of the mind. Uh, so when we look uh, later at the Asanga's um, compendium of determinations, uh, we find that there's a presentation of the four permutations or four possibilities uh, between karma that is accumulated and karma that is done. Uh, so we find that later on. Uh, explained in the text. Speak so. <laughs> So when we have a non-virtue 
any among the ten non-virtues that we think about for a very long period of time, then this becomes a non-virtue that is accumulated and therefore one is certain to experience. Uh, the same is true for the ten virtuous deeds. Uh, if we think of, about any among the ten virtuous deeds uh, for a long period of time, we have this premeditation that's there and then we carry it out, uh, then this becomes a virtue or an ethic that is uh, accumulated and also that one is certain to experience because it is accumulated. Mm. Uh, then we find what excludes something from the category of a, a type of action that's accumulated, and we find that it begins, there are ten, and it begins with such things as actions done in dreams. Uh, mm. These don't categorically fall under that because they aren't a great virtue or a great non-virtue. Uh, so they, they uh, don't fall under that category. And we find ten exclusions here in the text. So then we find the presentation of the four permutations of four possibilities from uh, asangas of companion of determinations uh, where uh, um, we use the example of killing for instance and we are comparing the two karma that is uh, done and karma that is accumulated so if we look for a karma that is accumulated uh, but not done uh, we could say a killing that one has thought about it for a long period of time but not actually carried out uh, if we look for uh, a, a karma that is uh, done but not accumulated, uh, we'll use the uh, um, e example of killing that is not thought about for a long period of time but is carried out. Uh, something then that is accumulated and done, uh, we can say uh, that's a karma, a killing that has been pre, there's large amount of premeditation thought about for a long period of time and then carried out. So that then that case is done and accumulated. And if we're looking for the example of something which is neither, uh, then we would use the example of a tree. Uh, so this is how we come up with those four possibilities or four permutations. Uh, something which is uh, um, uh, um, done but not accumulated, something which is accumulated but not done, something which is a common locus between the two, and then something which is neither of the two. And that fulfills the four permutations or four possibilities. Dixon. So then it says that once you have the understanding that's related to killing with these four permutations, then you can relate it to the others as well uh, in the same exact way. But then if we look at the three of the mind, uh, um, uh, covetousness, harmful intent, or wrong view, and then we don't have uh, these four permutations that we can follow. When we use the examples of actions, actions of the mind, we don't have four permutations. Mm. <coughs> Then Sapa Shela Sapa, 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 Shela Sapa
Nasa Jiri Musantana, Nasa Divasa Sabare, Luta Jiri Musantana, Luta Divasa Sabare, each is not the Muni by Mares. Ale Muni by the Chapa Mayimba Saba Yimba Saba. Okay, so the, we don't find that second permutation. Sila Mazaba Yumaris. Ma, ma sa, the sh, sapa ma shela yomai. Shela ma sapa. Ale. Nase jiri ma santana, nase diva sa sapa ruta. Shela ma sapa yomai. Shela ma sapa yuna, nase jiri ma santana, nase diva ma sapa yomai. Te yomai si ruta. Meni ba yomai. So the second uh, permutation uh, is, is not uh, found. So you don't have a karma uh, that is accumulated but not done because uh, once there is that thinking about it for a long period of time uh, then it's uh, been done uh, so you don't have uh, that second uh, permutation because of that Uh, so now uh, we get into the next section uh, that deals with the three fruitions, uh, uh, the, the three, they're the times of experience or the three fruitions. So, uh, here uh, we have the, the three. First, ex experiencing it in the here and now. Uh, second, experience it, experiencing it after taking uh, rebirth, uh, and then ex last, experiencing it another time. So the first is uh, having the experience come to fruition in this life. Uh, the second is having the experience come to fruition in the immediate next life. Uh, and then the third, uh, karma that happens at another time is that it comes to fruition in uh, lifetimes later, not the next life, but lifetimes later on. ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、
with a predominant attitude of not looking after these. Uh, so not looking after your body, resources, or your existence. Um, the next is, in the same way, non-virtuous actions that you have done with an attitude of strong malice towards living beings. So if you have strong malice towards sentient beings uh, or a strong amount of harmful intent, uh, then that action give, uh, will come to fruition in this lifetime. And then it's opposite. Uh, virtuous actions that you've cultivated with an attitude of deep compassion and helpfulness. Uh, so a virtue that you've done out of love and compassion, uh, a desire to be helpful to other sentient beings, uh, will ripen uh, in this lifetime. So this is a karma that is experienced in the here and now. Number five, non-virtuous actions that you have done with great animosity towards the three jewels, gurus and the like. Uh, and then the, the opposite, which is it's the virtue, uh, virtuous actions that you have cultivated with an attitude of deep faith and belief in these. So you have faith and conviction uh, in the three jewels, uh, in the lamas, uh, and so forth. Uh, so a virtue that is um, done with this deep faith and belief in these uh, becomes a virtue that gives rise to an experience in the here and now in this lifetime. Uh, number seven, non-virtuous actions that you have done with an attitude of enmity towards those who have helped you, such as parents and gurus, and an attitude of not repaying them for what they have done. Uh, and then the opposite, <clears throat> virtuous actions that you have cultivated with a strong attitude of wishing to repay uh, those who have helped you. Uh, so we find these eight types of actions that give rise to an experience in the here and now, in this lifetime, uh, in the levels of yogic deeds by Master Asanga. What <laughs> Santana, Drabo Santana, each in two mores. Ichi Jeba. Ichi Jeba. Okay, um, uh, So when we look at these um, points that are made about karma that you experience in the here and now, that if you do this certain type of action, that it will give rise to an experience in this life, uh, this is an extremely hidden phenomenon and not something that we can analyze with using correct signs and reasoning the, norm, the way we normally would to establish it by valid cognition. Uh, we have to establish it through what is called the uh, inference uh, through belief, uh, in, or inference, uh, inference through conviction, or inference through belief. Uh, and this, is a, a, this um, comes, comes about uh, by analyzing other topics uh, which you can use correct signs to come to the conclusion of, uh, and then by finding out that the conclusions that were made in those other topics that are extremely subtle, uh, and those conclusions that were exclusively made only by the Buddha related to certain topics, uh, uh, that uh, um, those conclusions uh, that are made that you can use correct signs show that if the Buddha is correct about these subtle points about reality, there must be a correct conclusion about these other subtle points about reality. So Arya Deva says in the 400 verses, uh, if you have any doubt uh, about the pronouncements that are made about hidden phenomena by Lord Buddha, uh, you should then look at the doctrine on emptiness uh, to clarify your doubts. So what is meant here is that the Buddha is the only presenter of this emptiness. Uh, Dharmakirti states that Buddha alone gives the presentation of the Four Noble Truths. Uh, so because we find the, there is accuracy with this other material that's been presented, then we come to the conclusion, because of faith, 
that's generated through looking at these things where we can use logic and reasoning. Uh, um, so we generate this faith, and then we have this faith of conviction that becomes, uh, um, we believe these things that we can't prove through logic. Uh, and, and it actually is a level of inference. Of when we look at inferential valid cognition, uh, it's one of the categories of inference, uh, that inference through belief. Um, so... Um, we come to that conclusion by analyzing other topics and seeing that those are correct, uh, and then we say, because these other topics are correct, then these, these topics must be correct as well about hidden phenomena, extremely hidden. It's actually called uh, Shintu Kujo, or extremely hidden phenomena. So now we're going into a new section that we haven't gone over yet. Uh, it's going to be on 242 in the English, and it's the section on karma that you experience after you have been reborn, so the second kind of karma. Uh, and again, page 242, then Jadan, Jeju, Jeju. Jeju, Jeju, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, now we it says karma that you will experience after you have been reborn is the effect of actions which you will experience in the second uh, next lifetime. Karma that you will experience at other times is the effect of actions which will ripen in or after the third lifetime. Uh, so here uh, we have a very uh, short summary of the meaning of these points. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So then if we have something that comes to fruition in the exact next life, uh, then this is karma that you will experience after you've been reborn. If it takes place any time after that, uh, then it's karma that you will experience at other times. <laughs> ngatuje <laughs> Less 
The way in which many virtuous and non-virtuous karmas that exist in your mind stream ripen is as follows. So within our mental continuum, we have this beginningless uh, rebirth. So we have beginningless virtuous deeds and beginningless non-virtuous deeds. Uh, so we have a doubt, then how, how do these give us an experience, and when, how and when, uh, and so forth. So a doubt arises in our mind. Uh, so here, this explains it. So the first category is, whichever karma is weightiest will ripen first. So whichever karma is the greatest degree at that time, uh, then that karma will ripen first. So when we have all these different virtues and non-virtues, whatever, whatever one is the weightiest at the time of where there is going to be a fruition, uh, then that one is what gives rise to an experience. So virtuous deeds, uh, um, when uh, they are the, uh, the greatest level, the weightiest actually ripen first, and then there are different degrees. Then you have a medium degree of virtue, and then a small degree of virtue. The heaviest, the greatest degrees are what ripen first, in the same way that non-virtue, the greatest degrees uh, of them are what ripen first. And the Nipa the Gewa da Megewa Chipa, then a the Natsushina Devo Garmel Migrasana Ne Chianyana Gom Chianyana, Chianyana, Diba Diba da Guan Chichu Diba Rediana, Nyana Chi Duna and a Chi Duna Duna, not Juba. Kasa <laughs> So number two, uh, if the weights are equal, so if there's an equal amount of virtue and an equal amount of non-virtue at the time, whatever happens to be manifest at the time of death, whatever's present at that moment is what gives rise, uh, uh, will ripen first. Uh, so uh, that's number two. And then number three, if it also is at the same time, so if this is also is the same time, if they're both uh, at the same time uh, equal, uh, whatever karma you have predominantly become habituated to will ripen first. So whatever, the word gom uh, is the same word for meditation. Uh, so whatever one you've meditated on more, whatever one you've been more familiar with, uh, then that one will ripen first. So this word habit. Uh, 
habituated uh, or meditated or familiarized, all of those are the same uh, translation, uh, uh, translation of that same word gom uh, in Tibetan. So if you have a greater familiarization with non-virtue, uh, then that will ripen first. If you have a greater familiarization with virtue, uh, then the virtue will ripen first. So uh, going back again to number three, it's that familiarization with it uh, that makes it kind of predominant. uh, if, if this is also the same, so uh, if you have this equal uh, amount, um, then whatever karma you have done first will ripen earliest. So whatever one of the karmas were done first, uh, then that's the one that uh, uh, will ripen. So here, uh, this we find a quote from uh, the auto commentary of the Treasury of Knowledge. So when we look at Basu Bandhu's works, we have the Abhidharma Kosha, which is the root text, and then we have the auto commentary to that text that uh, um, Basu Bandhu actually wrote himself as well. Uh, and we will f we find that in the Tanjur, in the authentic Indian commentaries text that we have. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Mm. So we, we find uh, um, 
So the quote from the Treasury of Knowledge Auto Commentary, uh, so again, this is the uh, commentary to the Abhidharma Kosha uh, that was written by Basubandhu. Uh, so Basubandhu writ the, wrote the Abhidharma Kosha as well as this commentary. Uh, and it says, as to the actions that give rise to cyclic existence, there are those that are weighty, those that are near, the, those to which you are habituated, uh, and those to those you did earliest. Among these, the former uh, will ripen first. Um, so here, uh, um, this is speaking of the different ways uh, in which the, the a karma that has been engaged in will ripen. Um, so if we have a virtue or a non-virtue, the weightiest will ripen first, uh, and then if they are equal, uh, whichever is manifest at the time will ripen first. Uh, if the, those are equal at the time of death, uh, then whatever com you've been more familiar with will ripen first. And if those are equal, equal uh, then whatever is done first will ripen first. Um, so we, we find these points made. In this actual text, uh, uh, um, there was a teacher in Varanasi, who was an Indian monk, uh, who was assigned to give us an explanation of this text, the Abhidharma Kosha Auto Commentary. Uh, and he really didn't have the skills necessary to be able to teach it. Uh, so, and we were all uh, very learned and knew a lot about the Abhidharma teachings at the time, um, and because we were studying philosophy. Um, so I remember uh, he was supposed to be teaching us this specific text, uh, so he would just read it out loud uh, and then tell stories. So he would never actually explain the lines of it. Um, but this quote is from that text, and I remember that in my studies where there was this time in Varanasi where I was studying there, uh, and um, uh, this was the class that was supposed to be being given, um, but the content was too hard for the teacher, so he really couldn't uh, explain it to us. Um, so this is from that specific text, uh, and it shows us how uh, in that order, from the heaviest ripen first, that's that ones that are present ripen the next most, those habituated uh, with ripen the next most, and then whatever is done first, uh, if all of those others uh, don't cause a ripening, then that's what causes the actual fruition. Um, so, I, um, let me just make sure that's everything. Uh, so, uh, that the source for that again is Vasu Bandhu's text. What Dibat <laughs> And then, Dibi so, uh, it's a, a very important information here. So, uh, if we have action, of whether virtuous or non-virtuous, the weightier, the heavier of the two will ripen first. Uh, if those weights are equal, uh, then whatever is most present at the time of death will ripen first. If they're both present equally at the time of death, then whatever one is more familiar with, whatever one has habituated him or herself with more at the time of death, I w will give rise. Uh, and if those two are equal, then whatever action has been engaged in first will give rise to an experience first. Rimeshe. <coughs> so we'll take a short break. <coughs> Not 
So today is an important day. I'll have to look it up. I'm really not familiar with it, but it's an important day. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the something of an emanation to drew trupa. So something of an emanation where there was a. I'll have to look up the story. But Rinpoche is saying there was an emanation of a Buddhist teacher, a uh, Buddha, and then a non-Buddhist teacher. Uh, that, and I'm really not following the story completely. So I'm just going to have to table it to another time. You can look up absolutely, uh, you know, on the calendar exactly what it signifies. Um, but it's, uh, and, and then maybe if somebody has it, we can come up with the exact name of the day. Um, but it's significant um, because the Buddha was in the, this world. Uh, uh, during that time, uh, but I don't know the significance with the Buddhist non-Buddhist teacher. I'm just not putting the story together properly. Well, <laughs> So in the 1st through the 15th in Lhasa, Jay Rinpoche started the tradition of doing from the 1st through the 15th ceremonies. They would make offerings to this large Buddha statue and uh, make prayers around it to a large Buddha statue in Lhasa and make prayers around it. And there were other statues as well that were uh, constructed uh, in honor of this. So Lama Tsongkhapa started the tradition of making a seven-limb prayer offering in Lhasa. So then the 13th Dalai Lama created a tradition where Drepung Ganden and Sarah would get together to celebrate this specific day in Lhasa. So we have to find out what the day exactly is. Sometimes 20 or 30,000 uh, monks would be, it went off. Uh, it would be there. It went off of the thing, thing that it is. Um, would be there. We'll just find out the exact name of it right now. The Day of Miracles. It's the Day of Miracles, or the Day of Emanations. Uh, it could, um, and we'll find out more information about it after. That is also the Gishi, what the Gishi Yaga. Gishi Tavas, what the Tanjakas, Haromas, Hassal Tanjaba, Haromas, Honon Tanjaka, Gishi Yaka to this, Gishi Haromba. So then the Geshe Larampas would, uh, the Larampa is the higher degree of the Geshe's, and the Geshe Larampas, the Jujre, the Dute. Yeah. That's so. Uh, so then they would uh, de debate for this Larampa degree during this uh, ceremonies of the Day of Miracles. Uh, they would debate to be able to achieve this Larampa degree uh, de between the universities. Then what the putting out of Shukile, none at us at Angreta, Shukile, none at us at Angre, Nimig on Umata, Pashi Tangre, Wundal to Dotangre. So in the morning, uh, they would debate the Prajna, uh, they would debate the Pramanavartika Karika. In the afternoon, they would debate the uh, Parashin and uh, the uh, Prajna Paramita and Madhyamaka. And then at night, they would debate the Abhidharma teachings. So 
so then there would be these great debates at nighttime uh, where these very high gachets would come uh, and be involved in these very uh, important debates, these very uh, uh, great debates, basically, would take place. And then they would assign the uh, um, numbers to the geshe. So the first larampa, second larampa, third larampa, they would give uh, the, the numbers of, uh, um, next to the degree larampa as well during this time. Did you come up with a. No. Uh, nothing more. Just uh, nothing more work. than that. I'm, I apologize. I don't have. Uh, I just don't want to waste the time. So, dear, this today is uh, a very important time because of this. Um, so it's the, the day of miracles. <coughs> Similar to the Sakadawa time as far as its importance. <coughs> One virtue that we engage in uh, because it's called the time of increase uh, increases to a hundred thousand virtues when we engage in it. Uh, so when we look at how uh, um, the karma is presented in the great treatise, we have uh, um, reflection on karma and its effects in general. Uh, reflection on karma and its effects in detail or specifically, uh, and then how to engage in virtue, abandon non-virtue after you've reflected on karma and its effects in general and specifically. Uh, so now we've completed the section on the general, uh, reflecting on karma and its effects in general, uh, and now we're moving into the section on uh, reflecting in the detail or the specifics of karma and its effects. So we're on page 242, uh, reflecting on karma and its effects in detail in the English. Nami 
七分钟做吧，南明园的他们七分钟做吧，他妈的，七分钟做吧，七分钟做吧，当不得事，七分钟做吧呢，关键偏比吃人多偏心，旁边带着吃人多难把握事。吃饭送书包的，我就来个。吃人不偏把拿钱，那吃人不难吐吧的，我就当不得吃饭送书包的，我得了死。他来个吃人不偏把拿，那偏把拿钱，吃人不得嘛吐吧人呢，吃饭送书包这个买卖了他。来就吃人不偏把拿钱，吃人不得吐吧人呢，我得吃饭送书包死。那么就要在这个上当不得了死。It is <clears throat> so reflecting on karma and its effects uh, in detail. It is certainly the case that you will acquire a good body and mind uh, through giving up uh, ten non-virtuous actions. Uh, nonetheless, uh, if you were to bring about a body and mind that are fully qui qualified, this would uh, not. Nonetheless, if you were to bring about a body and mind that are fully qualified, this would accelerate your cultivation of the path as nothing else would. Therefore, seek such a life. Um, so, uh, um, it, if we give up the ten non-virtuous actions, then the fruition of giving up those ten non-virtuous actions uh, is that we will have acquire a good body, a good mind, uh, and good resources. So here we will now get into the next part uh, about the, um, um, the, the actual fruitions and the attributes of those fruitions, the, the details uh, of the fruitions uh, that we have. So we first get into the excellent quality of life. Uh, so when we uh, um, of our life, so then we'll have these eight fruitions, uh, so the excellent qualities of life. So it begins with uh, con uh, consummate lifespan. Um, so the the tambo it say rimbo rimbache. Ce person so ba se na me na na me yete je na tambo tero. Ce person so ba se dis life mar ba. Person so ba se je mo tewa te se lege pe ba na je ne tu ba ina ce person so ba des. So this lifespan, consummate lifespan, would be an excellent type of life. So I said, is this a long life? And he said, well, an excellent life would include a long life. Uh, but this is referring to an excellent type of lifespan, so an, uh, a great lifespan. Uh, so this is the first of the eight fruitions. The <laughs> Uh, so the second one is uh, color. Uh, so this is referring to beauty. Um, this is referring to uh, having a beautiful shape, a beautiful form. Uh, um, so this consummate color, the excellent qualities, uh, which are color, but this is referring again to uh, one's beauty. So the third is uh, to do with the consummate lineage, so having an excellent lineage. So when we look at the different lineages uh, and we look at different castes previously, the, the king's lineage, the Brahmin's lineage, uh, and so forth, 
uh, we would say that in, in the world, uh, there are all these different um, uh, types of lineage uh, that you would, you would have in the world, different types of people, uh, different lineages. So whatever lineage you're from, it's from a good lineage uh, with excellent qualities. Uh, so this is number three. Jibba Okay, so... Uh, so we're going to read through this. So uh, consummate lifespan is when virtuous projecting karma from a pre previous life projects a long lifespan and you live for a long time that was projected. Consummate color is having an excellent body by way of its good color and shape, being pleased, uh, pleasant to look at because you do not have incomplete sensory faculties and being beautiful due to being well proportioned. Proportion. Consummate lineage is having been born uh, with the good lineage that is esteemed and famed in the world. Consummate power is great resources, uh, an abundance of close associates such as relatives, brothers, sisters, friends, etc., and many helpers. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Trustworthy words are words that living beings will accept because you are suitable to be trusted and not to delude others physically or vocally and are uh, an authoritative uh, witness to all disputes. Um, so here, uh, you aren't uh, lying, you aren't uh, telling untruths, uh, you are respectable, uh, you can be relied upon. Uh, so here, uh, the trustworthy words uh, um, are speaking of the, uh, um, what you say is important. Uh, so when relied upon, you, your words can be relied upon. Uh, so that's what number uh, this next one is. That number uh, this one. Number <coughs> Chinese Tabita 
Taba Dance, Kemba Chishin's, Mother Neabur Das, Kemba Chishin. Tell it to you, two chambi, Chenna's Juba, Tay and Susan, Joe Mobogay, Chenna's Juba, Chuba Pisa, you then the rest, Chenna's Juba was, Tuba to what he embedded. Renown as great power is to be honored by a great multitude of beings because of your fame and wide acclaim due to your confident generosity uh, and possession of good qualities such as perseverance. Uh, so here you have, uh, you become famous because of uh, the excellent qualities that you possess, um, because of the generosity that you engage in, uh, and therefore you have a great amount of power because of this fame. This way. What the Trubat Jee Trubatwa? It's number six. That new one there. Jeeba ne, Jeeba ne. Jeeba ne, Pee Yongba Da Denba. Pee Yongba Da Denba. Point Nobody, Number eight, having strength is by the power of previous... Okay, so number seven is being a male is to have a male organ. Uh, so that's number seven, quality, being fruition is being a male. The next, having strength is by the power of previous karma, naturally experiencing little energy, uh, little injury, no illness, and great enthousi enthusiasm arising uh, from life's experiences. Uh, so here... Uh, one will be free of illnesses uh, and will feel good all the time. Um, and this is because of the, the um, karma uh, that is uh, making this happen. So this is, means that you'll be a strong person uh, because of previous karma. So these are the uh, eight you intent, uh, good fruitions. Um, so it... it, it uh, Namen Yun Ten J. The Nami eight Yun good Jidu. fruitions would be what it's actually called. The eight good fruitions. Ta Namen Yun Ten J. Do what the J? They are don't do neba the tamu us. They are don't do neba the tsepansun soba del kovaris. Don't do neba the tsepansun soba. Don't do neba ne tamu us. Don't do neba the don't do la the mali J. Ba the ne tsepansun soba. There is. ドンドネバンタンボウスナメヨデジグナンタンボツペンソソバトマルベツペンソソバデドンドネバトワテタンボテレスタルネニバウスカドフンソソバカドフンソソバトワテルルテレスルカドフンソソバアネチワデアネチ
，刘茂远在上解决团当时，远在上解决团时，他几百人陪王不得在把事怎么的呗？嗯，他多当在把几百人把的，几百那小娃当起，多当在把，几百那小娃个主播人呢，多当在把我当起了苦活的是。嗯。Moreover, the first consummate uh, uh, lifespan is living in a happy realm. Um, so, uh, this is the first category among the eight. Uh, so, it's referring to living in a happy realm. The second consummate color is the body, uh, so having a beautiful body. The third consummate lineage is birth, uh, so the lineage one is born in. The fourth consummate power is resources and helpers. The fifth trustworthy words is being an authority in the world. The sixth renown as a great power. It's fame about is fame about such power. Uh, the seventh being a male is having the capacity for all good qualities, uh, and the eighth strength is having power in your activities. Uh, so these are the eight uh, fruitions. So I guess the yun ten is qualities, usually excellent qualities. So this word attribute, maybe that's why they use attributes of the fruitions, uh, good qualities that are fruitions. Maybe uh, another way to translate that. Um, but just looking at that word yun ten and the at word attributes, it makes sense. Well, <laughs> 常常我得，安尼，白面了在那搞啥嘞？白面了买了当当看，就是给我在扎东的是，鸡巴了买了当扎东的是哪个马路的？白面了下头过些屋的是，看都是我得，白面了看就蛮多，常常了我得，鸡巴了看就蛮多的。你少少不用买，公家买不起。我没，我没。啊。我们下车，我们过来就我的是，我们军训现在看个再有动物的是，入入不好嘛，对不对？来是。我这边没人，看，有点忙不着很多事，常都是看到路的，陪我不到点嘛是。嗯。So we find this this uh, Rinpoche is going to this being a male part. So we find this kind of information in the sutra teachings, but in the uh, tantric texts we find just the opposite kind of notion where you would actually circumambulate and pay homage and make prostration uh, to the female. And then we find um, all of the excellent qualities of the female being represented in the tantric tradition. So uh, we find kind of a differing idea when we get into tantra uh, than we see here that uh, um, looks like it's um, 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 saying the opposite of that, that, it's, um, doesn't, that a female doesn't have these excellent qualities. So we find this in the sutra teachings, but in the tantra teachings we find the opposite, where there's this reverence for the female and the excellent qualities of the female. Okay. And so we find, oh, and I forgot, I'm sorry, we find this need for respect even in the vows themselves uh, of the tantric lineage. Um, so sometimes you'll see uh, that uh, um, there's a representation that the, uh, it is lower, and then sometimes you'll see a representation that it's actually higher. Uh, so we have these two ideas um, uh, about the female form that are presented by Buddha. ตาหน้าเมจิเจ็บเจียวตาหน้าเมจิเจ็บเจียวที่ตาหน้าเมจิเจ็บเจียวเนี่ยตามบนเนี่ยร้านต่อเจียวเจียวเนี่ยร้าน
time in terms of working for the welfare of both yourself and others. So you have, uh, when you have this type of lifespan, you have a long time to be able to work on these things. You have a long time to be able to accumulate virtue uh, in relation uh, to working for yourself and for the needs of other beings. Uh, so uh, this is the first uh, fruition. Mm-hmm. So the second uh, is the effect of the color, this consummate color. So the effect of consummate color is that merely through seeing you, disciples are pleased and gather around you. They then listen to your words and want to carry out your instructions. So here, as a result of this beautiful color uh, appearance, uh, the, you are uh, um, disciples are attracted to you. So the third, the effect of consummate lineage is that people carry out your instructions without uh, disregard. So they do what you say uh, when you have this lineage. So number four, the effect of consummate power is that through giving you gather living beings and then mature them. So other sentient beings like the fact that you've been generous to them, that you've given them something, uh, and then they become attracted to you and you can then uh, uh, mature them because they assemble, uh, because they like that you've given them something, so they come around. Uh, and then you can work on maturing them. Uh, so this is number four. Ngapa? Ta ngapa nye ba ma wa ta, tuyen shue ba ta, tuyen tuyen bie, se jen na dui jing mei ba jie ba wo, jen ju mei jie sa ta ba rue, nye ba ma wa. Nye ba ma wa zi, kaja kye ba jie na ma du, kaja kye ba jie na, ane jen zu ga ba jie na ro, ta. Nye ba ma wa ta, ane jen da le, nye ba ma wa na jing, di yi tuyen da te, Sushuetnyalejewurzhtunshuebata, Uh, The effect of trustworthy words is that through kind speech, purposeful behavior, and being one whose aims are the same as the disciples, you gather living beings and mature them. So by being one who carries out the practices that the disciples are uh, carrying out because your aims, your goals are the same as those disciples. So you're doing what you say to do. Um, uh, um, so this is the effect uh, um, uh, of those trustworthy words. Um, that because you're doing what you say to do, uh, then it makes those words trustworthy. <laughs> 
Shawa the effect of renown as uh, a great power is that because you have helped and assisted others in all activities, they repay your kindness and listen immediately to your instru instructions because you've previously helped them. Uh, they recognize that you've been very kind to them because of your helping them, and uh, so they therefore um, uh, um, uh, come to you. They wish to uh, um, uh, repay your kindness uh, that you've shown them, and then they immediately listen to what you are instructing. <laughs> And <laughs> Jane, <laughs> And Mm. So here, uh, the effect of being a male is that you have the capacity for all good qualities, a capacity for all skilled actions by way of aspiration and endeavor, a capacity for broad wisdom. Uh, um, the discrimination of objects of knowledge, moreover, you will be unafraid in assemblies and will have no reversals or obstacles, whether accompanying all living beings, speaking to them, enjoying resources with them, or dwelling in isolation. So there won't be any fear uh, related to these things. So the excellent qualities are referring to the excellent qualities of uh, the higher realm, uh, rebirth, of liberation, of complete Buddhahood, uh, so one will be able to achieve those excellent qualities, a capacity for broad wisdom. When we look at wisdom, there are a lot of different categories. <coughs> High wisdom, broad wisdom, uh, and so forth. Uh, so one will be able to achieve all of those levels of wisdom from that uh, basis of the, the male uh, body and so forth. So we find um, all of these uh, points uh, that are made and something like that. Let's make color concept. Uh, and this one. That's not the shadow of the things that are. Sabas, Shiro Kimodo, Shiro, Shiro Chua, and the Kashi Shiro Shirakula Chubo, Rito Chubo, and the Kashi Shiro Nubo, and the Kashi Shiro Sabo, and Kashi Shiro Sabos, 
sabo, shero chwa sabo nyong sabo, wat endu shero chwa dule endu shero chwa, shero lo chwa. So there are many different types of wisdom. So this is one of the categories of wisdom. Uh, there's clear wisdom. There's specific wisdom. Uh, there's great wisdom. So this categorically falls under uh, this broad wisdom um, category. Ta jeba ndere do na me jeba jeba na me jeba jeba ra da je je tuen la ra da je je tuen kan la ya ma ju xin sa ra do da je do ka ju ba yin na ma ju xin ane ka sa kure ka li me ba pu ba che la sa ra do ju ba yin na da je do ju ba yin na da ju wa me ba ane ka sa kure lu ku na che ba yin ma da pu ba che la Tembe is the Puba Tembur is Tembe Susutubi Susutubi Totune, Susutubi Shiro, Susutubi Shiro Totune, Mobber Shiba New Oz, Mushi Jensen Shibi Mushi, and the Mane Jidi and Mushi Lazo to Ganjubu and Womanwa. Could turn the Chiba years on the day, Mushi Tango to Ganjubu Tong with your son. So the number eight. Uh, deals with the ability to um, achieve the state of uh, clairvoyance and so forth. The effect of strength is that because you are not delusioned about either your own or others' welfare and are steady in your great enthusiasm for them, so you put in a lot of effort, you have great perseverance, you will obtain the power of discernment and then quickly have the super knowledges. So here this is speaking of the clairvoyance that is achieved through great effort. Um, uh, and then this is the effect, an effect of, of strength. That name is the name of 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 Tambo but the name of Juji is not the same as the name of 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 what did Nami do in Bertuto? So the Chuba let on dance. The Jinsuki Pentages could soon drag in a Hayana or the Kutakajabina Pentagi. Such a toilet to be such a then could toilet doba cava, no digibat cava, and serim what the such a toilet to what the bomb by his mother. Tell <laughs> Ne suja pomala zo 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 ngal ne ne su pomba yina antele nga zo na sa me ba to wa te su yi ba ta to so le den na sa me ba to ngu yo she so so sa lesa tambo te ta tambo so the first uh we have uh, the cause uh, so the causes of the fruition there are eight causes of the fruitions the cause of consummate lifespan is not harming living beings and the application of a non-violent attitude Further, it is said that. So here, this is abstaining from killing, abstaining from harming. If you go to a place where they're uh, harming, uh, getting meat or you know, harming fish, to actually have that stop, stop that from happening. 
so this would be uh, uh, an example of that. So stopping that. It says, by rescuing those approaching a place where they will be killed. So Rimche is talking about something that's up for slaughter and rescuing it. Um, by rescuing these approaching a place where they will be killed, and likewise giving life to others, and turning harm away from living beings who will acquire a long lifespan. So here you have the generosity of giving life to others. By doing so and by turning away from harm, then you acquire a long lifespan. Uh, through caring for the sick, uh, through a, uh, a doctor's giving medicine to the sick, and through not harming living beings with sticks, clumps of earth, and the like, you will be without illness. So if you care for someone who is sick, who is not well, then you yourself will be free from illness. Uh, so here is the uh, um, um, other points that are made about uh, this, uh, the, 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 life, the, ones, the lifespan and for what comes from non-harm, from helping other living beings. The cause of consummate color is giving light, such as clothing. Further, it is said that by relying on kindness and giving jewelry, you have a good physical form. The result of being without jealousy is said to be good fortune. Uh, so we make various offerings. Here we have offerings of light and so forth all around the center. So we have examples of light. And then if you give somebody a new piece of clothing, uh, then this would be also an example um, uh, of that. Um, uh, so we are out of time. Uh, so we will be back next time to go on through uh, further into the text. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Let's do the concluding mandala offering and dedication prayer. Fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. This is a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. I dedicate whatever virtues I have collected for the benefit of the teachings of all sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lozan Drapa to shine forever. I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. I dedicate all this virtue to emulate the knowledge of the hero Manjushri and likewise Samantavadra as well. For whatever dedication is praised as supreme by all the conquerors who traverse the three times, I also dedicate all my roots of virtue for the sake of auspicious deeds. In that pure land surrounded by snowy mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness. All powerful Abhagateshvara, Tenzin, Yatso, may you stay until Samsara's end. Pray for the long life of the precious Kensar Wandok, holder of scriptural and realizational doctrines, the spiritual friend who trained extensively in the five great philosophical texts, with exceptional wisdom and perseverance. Tuji Ramchikuti Shapi Denonam, that's